week's NXT featured a dog. A plus. Great show. Thanks for watching. Check out AEW Dynamite Graded. Click one of these videos down there. Oh, do we have to do the whole thing? Do we? All right, fine. This is NXT Graded. We open with Roderick Strong versus Cameron Grimes. And Roddy has got all Undisputed Era insignia removed from his music, from his entrance, from his attire. He's just our boy Roddy again. Grimes wants to buy the Undisputed Era brand, though. He even made a Grimes the System t-shirt and entrance video to show Roderick Strong. This just makes Roddy angry. Just goes for him. Strong tears strips off of Cameron Grimes, up until Grimes drives Strong into the pillar outside just before the break. Uh, we see the messianistic backbreakery of Roderick Strong push back into this one. It looks as if he's going to pick it up over Grimes. Uh, however, as he's picking him up for an Olympic slam, Grimes pulls out an undisputed era wristband from his trunks. And as Roddy hits the move, he spots this and it distracts him. And he's just sort of staring at it, looking all sad. Uh, this leaves him wide open for the cave-in from Cameron Grimes for the one, two, three. Grimes just beat Roderick Strong. This is a B. Really good showing from both here. I like these two as a as a pairing. They work quite well together. You know, as a TV match, they've left some of that on the table there, but I think what we got was good. I think Roderick Strong, uh, we'll talk about him a bit later on, but some interesting things uh, on the bubble with Roddy. We get a training montage with Karrion Cross. He is promising to deliver strikes and chops that Finn Balor will carry forever. And Scarlet speaks in tongues and tells Finn Balor to fall and pray. Then we get a video of Tommaso Ciampa and his career in NXT, narrated by Volta, who says that Ciampa used to be a ruthless leader, but now he's a shell of what he formerly was. Volta is going to prove at TakeOver what he says is always true, that the mat is sacred. See you next week, lads, for some fighting. Up next, Santos Escobar is out. He's throwing down an open challenge to prove why he is the best in the cruiserweight division, why he's better than Jordan Devlin, why he's the best in history. And it's answered by Tyler Breeze, strangely, who says he's worked his butt off to be here as opposed to Santos, who's had it handed to him and... He accepts the challenge. Off we go. Santos really intense to start with, but Breeze gets a bit of a look in just before the break where he runs wild and manages to take out Wackin' Wild and Raul Mendoza uh, before landing some big strikes onto Santos Escobar. In fact, Breeze is looking good up until after the break. He manages to, uh, to to get a beat down from Santos and come back from it with a Hurricane Rana, a Spine Buster, hits a Sharpshooter. He goes for the Unprettier, but Santos fights out of it, hits the Phantom Driver for the three. Legado, swarm over Tyler Breeze. They're going to beat him up, but out to save is MSK, who stopped the rot. And then the grizzled young veterans appear on the screen and say, whilst Legado are obsessed with trying to make Santos Escobar happy, whilst MSK are fixated on memes and such, they are laser focused on becoming tag team champions. We'll see these three fights at TakeOver. Uh, given this one, I thought it was a B minus, decent enough battle. Not quite everything there, but it was good to see Tyler Breeze getting some some shine as a singles wrestler. I think you forget that he's more than just Brazongo, doesn't he? Backstage with The Way, Johnny Gargano is livid at Austin Theory for putting himself in that battle royal later on tonight. Austin Theory has a rebut for this and says, Ray, remember that finger poker doom? To which Gargano says, that killed the business. Theory responds with, well, we're still here. So <laughs> it's actually a very good plan. Nice little nod that. Candice and Indy Hartwell promise to show what champions look like next. They are facing off against AQA and Priscilla Kelly. Or rather, Zayda, Ramia and Gigi Dolin, as they are now known. Good showing by those two, but this is a, a showcase, really, for the way. And we see Candice uh, knocking Dolin off of the apron and then hitting a wicked stepsister, followed by a diving elbow from Indy Hartwell for the win over Ramia. Uh, Candice afterwards on the mic says that she and Indy Hartwell want to become NXT Tag Team Champions and they're coming for the belts at TakeOver. To which the champs come out on the tank, Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart. They accept the challenge. They fire a nerf bullet at them and then drive off. Nice. C+. It was a, just a showcase, sort of 
uh, match for the way. Nice to see some new talent getting in amongst it as well, which is good to see. Io Shirai backstage and Raquel Gonzalez have themselves a little bit of a, a back and forth. We see them picking up where they left off last week with Shirai attacking Raquel Gonzalez and just getting dropped unceremoniously for her trouble. Gonzalez then heads off to the ring whilst medics check on Io Shirai. During the break, Roderick Strong leaves the CWC. He's got his bag packed. He's in the Battle Royal later on. Not anymore. He's gone. Roderick Strong's story I'm really intrigued by because whilst we're focused on Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole for TakeOver. This guy's kind of got lost and he's sort of falling through the cracks of this Undisputed Era breakup. And, and I can see this leading to something quite special for him when he makes a comeback. I think we won't see him for a little while. Something big's going to happen. Maybe him and Bobby Fish do something special. That'd be cool. Raquel Gonzalez in action next. She's taking on Zoe Stark. Ben from Triple Jump's favorite wrestler ever. It's true. Ask him about it. And this is a great showing again for Zoe Stark, who starts really well. Uh, she ends up getting she ends she ends up getting caught when she goes for a dive. But she throws Raquel Gonzalez, pushes Raquel Gonzalez rather into the ring post. Dakota Kai tries to get involved, and she gets clotheslined over the barricade for her trouble. In incredible twisting blockbuster from Zoe Stark for a near fall, and Zoe is motoring until she gets caught doing a spin kick with that one arm power bomb from Gonzalez for the one two. Three. After the match, Io Shirai, banged up from getting beaten up earlier on, hits the ring. They start fighting again to Shirai and Gonzalez. And once again, it ends with Gonzalez dropping Io Shirai, cracking her head uh, into the guardrail for her trouble. Uh, giving this a little bout between Stark and Gonzalez a B, because Zoe Stark had another great night. This is somebody that they're going to build the company around in time to come. I'm putting that out there right now. And Gonzalez with the Io Shirai stuff, she just looks unstoppable at the moment. We get a video featuring a dog running around the performance center. Now, the astute wrestling fan that lives on the gram will know this is Prince Presley, the Pomeranian that belongs to John Morrison and Tyre Valkyrie. Either that, or it's a dog that was set to make a debut for AEW Dark until WWE made it a more substantial offer, renamed it a cat, and told it not to do half its moveset. It could be either. It's probably the former. Kushida backstage approached by Pete Dunne for his comments about being the best technical wrestler, and Dunne wants, to, wants him to prove him wrong. They're going to have a little back and forth in the Battle Royal later on. Next up, it's tag team action with Team KC, Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter, taking on TN Shah. Now, this is set to be the debut of Mei Ying, the master in tag team action, but we don't see Mei Ying wrestle. We instead have Xia Li in handicap action, and she gets a little bit of a beating to start with, but then after a while gets back into this one. Caden Carter storms up the ramp, gets in the face of the master for not coming down to fight, to which the master grabs Caden Carter by the throat chokes her out and blows smoke into her face to knock her down, leaving Casey Catanzaro all on her own to get a big kick from Xia Li and take the three count. This was uh, this was right, a decent, short, storyline-driven moment. I'm giving it a B-. minus. I think we're getting back on track with Xia Li, but just about. I enjoyed the stuff with the master and the choke and the smoke. It's all a bit silly, but then wrestling's better when it's silly, right? Raquel Gonzalez is backstage, livid that she keeps getting jumped by Io Shirai. And in the background, like that scene from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, you can see her running towards her at top speed, takes her down again. And this time, Raquel Gonzalez once again gets on top of her and throws her through a wall, screaming at her to stay down. And then once again, medics who are working hard with Io Shirai tonight go over to check on her and make sure she's all right. I've liked all these bits tonight. They've been really fun. NXT Prime Target next. We are looking at the story between Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. And these Prime Target bits are always really beautifully put together. It's done in the style of a police interrogation where you've got Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly in separate rooms having their conversations recorded and they're talking about uh, their past uh, in Undisputed Era and we get clips from last week and the, the signing that they had. And then when they get to the bit where it's all coming to blows, there's special effects of thunder and lightning and rain it just feels big i love these videos they put together they're so so good the dog is back and he runs up to a pair of red boots and on the screen it says see you april 13th frankie to which the commentators are like who's right what's this 13th that's our first tuesday nxt what 
Mm-hmm. Frankie, a.k.a. Frankie Monet, a.k.a. Tyre Valkyrie. We'll see you in two weeks, Tyre. This is lovely news. Tommaso Ciampa cuts the promo of a lifetime here. He talks about the significance of of the necklace that Volta ripped off him, saying it was a necklace that his wife and daughter gave to him before he had neck surgery. And when asked the question whether he is, he has changed and being accused of changing, he says, yeah, he has changed. His priorities are different, but he says there is something more dangerous about somebody with something to lose as opposed to somebody who hasn't. He's been to the top of the mountain before and it's a hell of a fall on the way down. He says that at NXT TakeOver, he's going up to the mountain to face Volta and tells him to buckle up for the drop. This was a great promo by Tommaso Ciampa. It does a lot of good in sort of resetting him because I've talked for a, a couple of weeks on NXT Graded about how I feel like Ciampa's lost his way. This kind of feels like he's getting back on track. Main event o'clock. It is the first part of the Gauntlet Eliminator. It's a battle royal in which the final six will compete in a gauntlet match on Nightwater Takeover. The winner of that will face North American champion Johnny Gargano for the title. The order for that Eliminator gauntlet is to be determined in this battle royal on elimination. Are you with me? Good. Uh, Swerve Scott, Leon Ruff, Austin Theory, LA Knight, Pete Dunn, Cameron Grams, Kushida, Tyler Rust, Bronson Reed, Jake Atlas, and Dexter Loomis all in this one. They all start off fighting, except Loomis, who stands very stoically in the corner. Theory has uh, the, hot, the, the spot of the whole thing, one of the early spots of the whole thing for me, where he gets knocked out, but his feet don't touch the floor, like he's, like he's got his feet raised up, so he's trying to sort of scooch on his bum towards the steps, but... He forgets where he is, shows off, and does a kip up. And then the ref goes, Well, you're out, your feet touch the floor. That was very funny. Kashida and Pete Dunn knock everybody down, and we get the ruck between Kashida and Dunn. And this dust up ends with Kashida putting the hoverboard lock on Dunn and Dunn going for the ropes. They both end up going over the ropes at about the same time. Neither of them make the cut for the final six. So neither will be in the Eliminator Gauntlet come takeover night one. Maybe they'll have a singles match. Wouldn't that be terrible? Oh, wouldn't that be terrible? So, final six then. Uh, we're down to LA Knight, Dexter Loomis, Swerve Scott, Bronson Reed, Cameron Grimes, and Leon Ruff. Uh, we see Gargano join them on commentary. After the break, he makes a couple of jokes about Edge at Beth Phoenix's expense as well, which is fun. Uh, Bronson Reed, Hoys, Ruff, and Swerve out one after the other, which means they'll be entering number one and two in the gauntlet next week. So they'll be starting the match. And it's great because they've been feuding. They were trying to get at each other before the match even started. So this seems ideal, doesn't it? Uh, so we're coming down eventually with Bronson Reed. Pretty dominant until Grimes, Knight and Loomis all team up to get him gone. And here we are in the main event of NXT on USA. And it feels like we're back in the impact zone because we're looking at Eli Drake, Trevor Murdoch and Sam Shaw going at it. What a... What a treat. And on the night, Tyre Valkyrie, we saw her shoes. Oh, it's it's meant to be. It's meant to be. Anyway, Cameron Grimes tries to pay off Knight and Loomis to throw themselves over the top. They respond by chucking him out. And it comes down to Knight and Dexter Loomis. Real creative finish here where we see Loomis trying to suplex Knight out of the ring. Knight is able to avoid it. He then, he th then as because Loomis has gone over the top rope, he's on the verge of being eliminated. Uh, we see Knight charge at Loomis. Loomis lowers the rope. Knight goes through the middle rope, so he's not out. But then he pulls Loomis off the apron, and he's out. Knight rolls back into the ring. He's gone and won the Battle Royal. Creative little finish. LA Knight will enter last in the Eliminator on TakeOver Night 1. That's a B plus for me. I thought this was a well-structured Battle Royal. My, my reservation with this whole thing was it felt quite over egged the whole stool the whole battle royal into a gauntlet into a title contender match but i think what they did with this they were able to not only tell some great stories that we'll see unfold in that match at takeover but we've actually peeled off to do at least one other match at takeover as well that being kushida and pete dunn which i very much liked anyway the dust is settling on that io shirai is back she's like she's like the black knight in the holy grail it's a flesh wound. She's back in there. She's calling out Raquel Gonzalez again. They fight again. 
And this time, the NXT Women's Locker Room empties to try and split them up. And the show ends with Io Shirai essentially diving onto the entire women's division outside the ring and standing tall. That is your main event for night one of TakeOver. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Overall this week, NXT is a B plus. This was a solid go-home show. And it was a, a happy salve after what we all went through on Monday Night Raw, I do believe. You've got all the momentum going into two nights to take over from this show. And I'm delighted, delighted by it as well. All right, before I go, just a little heads up. You may have heard already the announcement about WTF moments from Ross. Uh, well, it's my job to tell you that following the NXT Tuesday night premiere, which is after WrestleMania, Graded will be coming to an end. This isn't a decision that we have made lightly. Just the YouTube algorithm as it stands right now has made doing this on the weekly unsustainable. So it's it's going to be wrapping up after WrestleMania, after the Raw After Mania, after the first night of NXT. Those will be the last couple. But we'll be back to do Graded for pay-per-views and such. So it'll never be the complete end of Graded. But we won't be doing it on the weekly anymore. But with that time, you, you won't be getting less content, all right? We are working on some really exciting bespoke content that we can put out in, in replacement of Graded. And I've got... In that cupboard there, right, I've got a book about that thick full of ideas that I'm throwing at Pachiti for videos, for podcasts, for streams. And now that I'm not going to be watching three hours of red brand nonsense and two hours of black and gold, mostly goodness, I've got time to do stuff like that. And I'm really excited for what we're going to show you very, very soon. Very soon. And also, right, should I tell you? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Okay, right. I can tell you that whilst Graded is coming to an end, we are currently working on a special live review show. And when we're in a position where we can all be in the room at the same time, you'll get it. All right, but that's for down the road. Thank you so much for supporting Graded. Whether you have agreed with what I've said, whether you find me far too optimistic, I've always appreciated the discourse that this show brings. Thank you so much indeed. Hey, we've got another week yet. We'll be doing TakeOver Night 1 and 2, WrestleMania Night 1 and 2, Raw next week, <laughs> Raw After Mania, and the first night of NXT on Tuesdays before we wrap it up. So plenty of grades still to give out. And there was a dog on NXT this week. How can you be sad in a week where there was a dog at the wrestling? Exactly. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.